Hi, I'm Chris Butler, a GP by background and um, a researcher. And something that is clear to me from my clinical work and from my research is how unequally illness and disease is distributed in communities. And it's often those who are in the poorest socioeconomic circumstances and who are of minority ethnic origin that suffer the biggest burden of ill health. Now, research has got massive potential to help everybody in society, uh, but particularly those who uh, suffer the most from ill health. Um, but research is pointless if it doesn't apply, if it doesn't mean things to the people who uh, suffer the most ill health. So it's really critical that we have samples in our research studies that are like the people to whom we wish to apply the research findings. In other words, for people to be helped by research, it's like people like them that have to be part of the research. Now, in the um, pandemic, we knew quite early on that um, People in um, more socially deprived areas, minority ethnic groups suffered more from the ill effects of COVID than others. And therefore it was absolutely critical that we got as many people in those categories to participate in research. It also became clear that if the research was brought to the attention of people, they were excited to be part of it and wanted to be part of the solution. If research is explained properly, the values underpinning it are good. Uh, most people do want to participate and the suspicion that sometimes comes with invitations to participate in research dissipates. So we learned a lot from COVID, from the principal panoramic trials where we achieved samples that were representative of minority ethnic groups and sometimes socioeconomic groups of the whole UK population. And it was a truly all four nations effort where we linked with community groups, faith groups, groups around different disabilities and illnesses, and learned from them of how to, how to communicate research opportunities and the value of research to the people uh, that they represented who were part of those groups. And this Centre for Research Equity is a fantastic development from that because what we're doing is we're embedding, we're organising and we're entrenching research participation, outreach and collaboration in, in a formal way that is sustainable. And it's a partnership, there's no doubt about that. It's, it's, it's what we have got to do is to learn from each other and, and you guys who signed up so enthusiastically to be partners in the center, you've got the expertise on how to reach out to your members and your constituents, how best to explain different research projects in different settings to them so that they can um, have the benefit of, of participating in research on a well-informed basis because research underpins improvement in healthcare. Those healthcare settings that uh, do research tend to deliver better care and research helps improve health and health improves uh, social development and community development. So it's a very exciting collaboration that we are joining together uh, today. We very, very, pleased by the commitment, the enthusiasm that everyone has shown. And it's just a, a historical day, really, where we're taking the learnings of so much that has gone before, joining together in a collaborative process and developing something really exciting and very effective uh, in terms of improving uh, healthcare research participation in every uh, sector and aspect of UK society to the benefit of everybody, to the benefit not only of those who participate in research, but to their families, their communities, to our children and to those yet to come. So thank you very much and join with me in sharing 
a fantastic launch and exciting process that goes forward from this day.